in this video we're going to go through how you can start creating your own calculation groups to reduce and reuse the measures that you have. We're going to go through how you can get started with it and also go through some of the example scenarios in which the calculation groups would be useful. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fran and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the Model Explorer is a new feature that came out as part of the October's feature update for Power BI. And along with it, it exposes the semantic model of your data sets, which are basically some of the properties that you previously couldn't access, like the calculation groups. And this calculation groups is what we're going to focus on for today's video. So calculation groups is actually not a new feature, and it's actually something that I covered a few years back. However, when I made that video, you could only kind of customize or edit your calculation groups through a third party tool like tabular editor. However, with the October update, you don't really need tabular editor anymore, at least for calculation groups, because you can do everything now in Power BI Desktop. So since the Model Explorer is a preview feature in the October version, you first just need to make sure that you download and install the October version of Power BI Desktop. And then once you've done that, you just need to make sure you enable it under File, Options and Settings, and under Options, you will need to find it under the Preview Features section down here. And just make sure that it's enabled here, Model Explorer and Calculation Group authoring. If you hit OK, restart your Power BI desktop, that should enable the calculation group authoring for you. You'll know that it's enabled uh, if you go to the model view on the left hand side here, you will see a calculation group button here that lets you create a new calculation group from the home ribbon. And you will also see this new model tab here on the right hand side, which gives you a whole list of new features under the semantic model. So to get us started, I've already created a sample data set here, just so that we don't really need to create it from scratch. This is the typical Northwind data set, which is a subset of a fictional company that sells goods internationally. So as you can see here in the model view, I've I have already a few tables set up. The relationships are set up, but it's not really the focus of today. So I'm not going to go through explaining how they are connected. But if we go back to the tables here, you will notice that under calculations, I've already created a few measures. Well, actually, let's go back to the report view and I can show you what I've done. So we have a few measures here that I've already created, which is just a calculation of the Northwind data sets in different aspects. So at the moment we have in this table that I'm showing here in the report view is the total gross sales for every single month within our calendar. Now the gross sales is basically just a multiplication of the unit price and the quantity. However, we have other sort of calculations that we are doing like net sales, which is your or gross sales minus any discounts, or maybe the quantity of the units sold, or maybe the average unit price. So I've just created the measures just so that we can use these for our kind of scenarios. And then what I've done is I have created a group of different measures here, which is just a different slice or comparisons for the gross sales. So let's look at one of them. So for example, I just uh, select gross sales previous month here, PM. And as you can see, all it does is it simply calculates the gross sales, but it just gets the previous month sales. Now, this kind of calculation is typically useful if you want to create a month on month percentage or comparison in your reports. So if you drag that into a table like this, for example, it's fairly self-explanatory. So in the month of August, you have 26,000 pounds in gross sales. However, in the previous month, which is July, the gross sales is 30,000, which is similar to the gross sales for July. So that's what you would expect these comparisons to do. So as you can see, it's very powerful, a lot of these calculations. And, you know, I've only created a few examples here just for us to use. And um, as you can see, it's all tied to the gross sales. However, let's say you want to make these comparisons in the net sales calculation. That means that for the net sales, if you want to create a net sales comparison against the previous month, you need to copy this measure, gross sales PM, copy this code, create a new measure and replace the calculation to be calculating the net 
sales, effectively duplicating the previous month tax measure. So, and imagine that we have a few other measures here that we might want to compare. So maybe we want to compare the net sales against the previous quarter. So that means we need to create those measures. And then maybe we want to compare the previous year units sold, in which case we need to create another measure for that. And as you can see, it sort of starts to duplicate the work, but kind of returning the same thing. And this is the kind of scenarios in which calculation groups can help you with. So to start using the calculation groups, let's go back to the model view here and let's start to create a calculation group. So you can do it by either creating a calculation group from here, just clicking the calculation group button from the home ribbon or from the model tab here. So when you create a new calculation group, it will automatically create a few things for you. It will create the calculation group table, the group column, as well as the item. So one of the measures that you will need to import from the comparison measures that we've created. So we're going to leave this as it is for now, the selected measure. And we're going to do a few things. So we're going to just name or rename some of these groups so that we know what they are. So this is the comparisons table. And then the column will be, we'll also call it comparisons. And then under the calculation item, actually under the measures, uh, let's look for one of the comparison measures that we were referring to earlier. So this one gross sales PM. So we're going to copy that. Under the calculation item, the first one that it's created, we're just going to replace that with the measure that we've just copied. We're going to rename it and make it more generic. So we'll call it previous month. And then instead of referring to over here, a specific calculation or a measure, we're just going to use selected measure. So this is the bit in the calculation item that makes sure that it is generic. So when you use or when you add a measure in the context of this calculation group, it will create a previous month calculation and basically reuse the same measure. So if it doesn't make any sense to you yet, um, we're going to go through it in a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to double check and make sure there are no errors here. So just add a closing parenthesis there for the calculate. And if we hit enter, that that uh, should be it done for our first calculation item in our calculation group. So now let's go back to the report view. So now let's delete this table and let's do a few things. So let's create a new matrix here. So in the matrix, let's add the month. Let's add the month in the row here. And in the column, let's add the comparisons. And then, well, let's see what the issue is. That's fine. And then on the calculation, let's see if we can add gross sales here. Here we go. So what it's done, and it doesn't look that obvious just yet because we only have one measure here and we only have one value that we are calculating is it's getting the previous sales for the gross sales. Now, at the moment, because we only have one, it looks like the just the calculation for the previous month. However, the power comes here is if we add net sales as a new value in this, as you can see, it gives us the previous month gross or net sales for the previous month that is in the current context. So you can add as many of these as you want. Average unit price, units sold, and it gives you the previous sales for those different calculations. So now we basically don't need this gross sales PM. And in fact, we can just delete it because we don't really need it anymore. And we can replace all of these other measures here to be part of the calculation group. Let's just do that quickly so that I can show you kind of what is the power of this measure.
So here we go. So I've created or recreated those measures as calculation group items instead in this, the one that we've just created. Now, if we go back to this table, you'll see that there are far more other things that you can see here now that you previously aren't able to, to do, or rather you'd have to create individual measures for each of these to calculate them. But now you don't have to because of calculation groups. So now what you can do is you can just simply go and delete all of those different measures that we are using to compare because we don't really need them anymore. Since we have calculation groups now set up. There are a few things that you can do and let's have a look at what other things you can do with the calculation group option here in Power BI Desktop. So at the moment we are showing all of the measures and all of the different calculation items in this calculation group. However, you might not want to use all of them. So in which case what you can do is you can use the column which is part of the calculation group here. As you can see here is basically a table and column combination. You can choose which one you want to use if you want to use all of them or you want to use just some of them. So for example, you might want to just see the previous month across all of these four different measures. So you just tick that and it will just give you the previous month. So tick or just select the different comparisons that you want to use. Another thing that you can do here is to adjust the order of your comparisons, or your items and how they show up when you show them in a matrix like this. So if we go to the model view and you select the calculation group, you will have or you should have this option calculation item order. So just drag them up or down as you need them and that will adjust their order. So another thing is that on these individual items, just because they are treated as measures, you might want to think about their dynamic formatting. So for example, if they are, or let's say a typical scenario would be to create a calculation item for a year on year percentage. If you want to make sure that your calculation item is showing in a percentage value, you have that option to kind of add that dynamic formatting here in this option here. So you can just enable dynamic format string and then adjust that to what you need. And that's really it for this video about calculation groups. Now I covered the sort of the basic elements of calculation groups and how you can use it. However, if you want to read more about it or read the documentation to get a more detailed view of this feature, I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As you Usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.